37. Nestled in the northwest of Italy near the beautiful city of Cuneo is Villa Chimera. A sort of resto mod of a building that once provided refuge for a king and was previously owned by the lawyer of the mighty Gianni Agnelli. Now it is home to this fascinating automotive resto mod, the brainchild of Luca Betti, former professional rally driver and possibly Tony Stark's Italian cousin. It's based on the Lancia 037, but has an engine inspired by the Delta S4. And as a devotee of all things WRC, that is music to my ears. Let me just uh, don the Italian bubble hat for the rally chat and explain why this car, to someone like me, presses all the right rally buttons. It starts with the influence of the Lancia 037 fairly obviously and that car's cool because in a rallying landscape of essentially boxy looking cars well this is just more supercar isn't it it's, it's like the stratos that preceded it it's just cool then there's the fact that it is the last car to have rear wheel drive and win a world rally championship against the audi quattros no less with a mixture of well being brilliant to drive, Volta Roll's favourite rally car to drive apparently, and also a bit of skullduggery on the part of the team. Salt and brushes, anyone? Then there's the other part of this car, the engine which is, well, inspired by the Delta S4. The most fearsome, I think, probably of all the Group B rally cars, certainly in terms of the power that it produced. It was so fearsome that, well, sadly it killed Ori Toivonen and Sergio Cresto. It also killed Group B in the process. But this car, being a sort of Lancia Group B greatest hits, well, it's just fantastic for a rally fan like me. Like the original, the Evo 37 begins with a relatively humdrum Beta Monte Carlo, or a Lancia Scorpion, if you're in the US. However, there's not much left by the time the transformation is complete. But perhaps we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Let's go back to how this whole project got off the ground. Well, the story of uh, Chimera Evo 37 starts uh, in a winter night in autumn when I invited uh, two of my best uh, supplier, uh, Ital Tecnica, Mario Cavagnero and his son Scarlo, and Alessandro Bonetto, to come here to see one uh, 037 Group B and hit uh, a, a, a tortellini, <laughs> you know, it's typical. So we have this dinner together and uh, I, tell, I told them, okay, I think uh, we can create something special. And uh, so we started to share our idea, we, we have the first brainstorming, we can do this, this, this. And basically I was uh, already with the car in my mind. In fact, if you see to the model we have uh, uh, in scale 1.5, uh, this is completely designed by me and all the concept was already there, 100%. But then, of course, thanks to Ital Tecnica and Bonetto, we will be able to create all the technical aspects. And uh, after this, I was searching for someone that permit me to refine the design. And we found uh, Luca Borgogno, which uh, uh, was the uh, chef designer of Pininfarina, where the old the 037 was designed and Luca is a fantastic uh, guy for, for me, it was an honor that uh, such uh, important designer um, participated uh, to our project and he shared with me the, 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 the ideas. It was always uh, uh, with the very respect uh, of us, of me, of the other part of the group and never imposed uh, to his line. And at the end this car is exactly a concert of passionate people that uh, getting together to create something driven by passion. The result is a car that looks unmistakably like its stubby yet sleek Stradale inspiration, but with much more angular muscle and aggression. It's an impressively cohesive evolution, 
perhaps typified by the modern interpretation of the original's telephone dial wheels. Under the carbon fibre skin is an integrated roll cage and tubular subframes front and rear. There are double wishbones all round, and like the original, there are twin shocks for the back wheels. To me, there is something so seductive about that quartet of Orange Olin's dampers. It instantly screams special stage. But Luca didn't want this to just look like a rally car. There is a huge difference of the characteristic of a race car in circuit and a race car in rally. Basically, uh, in, uh, in circuit, the, the, the corner are normally quite long. A driver, even if uh, has a Formula One, stay four seconds in corner. In rally, it's totally different. The, the timing in the corner are very, very fast and the car is always correcting his line. It's a, a completely different way of driving. And the Evo 37 is a car based on this philosophy. So you can feel a car that uh, could permit immediately to, to slide without the typical movement that a circuit car has when it slides, that it spins. So you can manage it and play with the, with the accelerator, which is uh, the best thing that uh, we can have uh, for being rally drivers. Welcome to the Colle della Maddalena between Italy and France, scene of one of Fausto Coppi's greatest exploits in the Giro d'Italia. But the Alps Maritime are of course famous for four-wheel drama too. We are right in the heart of rally country here. Down that way, Monte Carlo and San Remo that way. Good names, particularly for an 037. so much to enjoy about just being in this car. So many stylistic things. So it feels small in here, but actually there's also quite a lot of room. I love the view out in terms of that sort of low windscreen. Feels really supercar. Tiny mirrors. You can see those gaping intakes behind you. Oh, it's so, so loud and roaring here. And it's such a rally soundtrack with that four cylinder, 2.2 liters, and a massive Garrett turbocharger on it. Obviously, the supercharger as well. I love these little red buttons down here, which obviously evoke what would be uses generally in the rally car back in the day. In this car, they open and close the windows and, well, I'm not quite sure what else, because this is actually a pre-production prototype, so some of the interior isn't up to the beautiful, fully labelled spec of the finished article that you can see here on this fresh customer car. Personally, I rather like the slightly raw competition car vibe, but this is rather more befitting of a car costing around £450,000. To be honest though, however this Evo 37 was trimmed, you'd get the feeling of being in something a bit WRC the moment you started driving. As soon as you take a couple of corners in this car, you can tell that it's bred from a rally car and that it's been set up by a rally driver. And it's all in that steering. To anyone jumping out of a modern supercar, the steering probably feels quite well sort of quite light but quite slow and you notice the roll in the car particularly in the nose as well and it just means you have to have more bandwidth really I suppose it feels beautifully adjustable I absolutely love the feel of this in terms of the chassis you realise you want to drive it quite smoothly, get it loaded up in the corners and then load it with the throttle afterwards. And you notice it as well, just like an F40, once it starts sliding, you have to stick with the throttle. You have to keep it on boost, otherwise it'll snap off. It's quite aggressive into the boost, obviously. You lift off and all that just shuts down. 
what a fun car. This is a properly grown up experience. It asks a lot of you, but it's worth it. It's so fun too. And this isn't even the full map. Don't respect as well, it doesn't get more classic than green over tan, does it? Gearbox, it's a Graziano 6 feet gearbox that is also being used in the Lamborghini Gallardo and the Audi R8. So it feels nice and familiar. Still that shift, you just have to be careful going across the gate for the first time. I love the brakes on this as well. Lots of feel. Quite a sort of nice of depth to the travel on the pedal. So this hasn't got ABS. And you can really set the car up into corners on the brakes. Feel it lean in. One thing I actually would like a big handbrake here, I think it would just through the car. I think I'd probably change the seat a bit just for a bit more support and I think they are going to for some of the other production cars. This is not a car I don't think to go and do a really long journey in perhaps. You take it out for a blast and you concentrate every step of the way. There will probably be a bit more sound deadening on the final customer cars too in order to make it a bit more friendly on long journeys but I hope not too much, because I really like this car's slightly rowdy nature. It rides bumps with sublime composure, just as you'd expect from a rally car, but I love that this serenity in the suspension is contrasted with a slight sense of mayhem elsewhere. Is this for everyone? Absolutely not. And I think it's all the better for it. In the same way as that MST Escort had such a distinct rally car feel to it, so this does. <laughs> because of its pre-production status, this car has Camira's two road maps for the engine. There is a third engine map for the track, which takes power up to 505 brake horsepower, but we'll come back to that in a bit. For now, we have the option of around 300 brake horsepower, already enough given that the car weighs under 1100 kilos or 2400 pounds, or in map 2, a more feisty 420 brake horsepower. I actually think the car just feels so much happier in its more aggressive setting. It's really interesting the way this delivers its power because obviously there is a huge amount of boost. The little 2.2 litre four cylinder engine and then that massive Garrett turbocharger backed up by the supercharger. Obviously, it feels a really boosty car. Really boosty. Actually, way it comes in you realise after a while it is pretty smooth. It's not the purely sort of big bang of an F40 as much as this car does remind me of an F40. What a car. What a road. Now after experiencing some of what the engine could deliver I wanted to find out a bit more about just how it goes about its business. So we left the mountains behind and headed to Ital Technica in the heart of the Piedmont region. This is a family engineering business that has a very impressive client list of motorsport and supercar manufacturers. There's also a workshop here preparing historic rally cars like this original 037 and this very special S4 with a wild twin turbo triflux engine. But we're here to talk about the Chimera's rather exotic engine with the head of technical direction in the powertrain department, Carlo Cavaniero. Carlo, thank you so much for showing us round <laughs> your amazing You're company welcome. as well. And this is obviously the Evo 37's engine. So we've got steel block yes. in here and it was, it was all developed from the original Yes, all engine. the parts are developed uh, uh, starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. The only thing that uh, with the uh, Chimera uh, we, we have maintained is the layout. So the really unique thing about this engine is the fact that we have turbocharger, you can see Garrett yes. over there, but we also have a supercharger. 
Yes. Oh. So how do you get them to work? Uh, yes, then uh, there is uh, a turbocharger that uh, is uh, spin by a supercharger. This layout was uh, quite similar to the original Lancia Delta S4 engine, but uh, it is different because uh, uh, update with the electronic throttle uh, system and uh, uh, an electric clutch. Then uh, at uh, low RPM, uh, the clutch is uh, engaged and uh, this valve is completely closed. Uh, supercharger uh, bring air uh, from the turbocharger and help uh, uh, it to spin fast and then uh, uh, push air in the intercooler. Uh, this valve is closed in a way that uh, air cannot return uh, to the turbocharger. And then at uh, uh, 4000 and 200 RPM, this valve is completely open and the clutch is uh, disassembled, uh, disengaged, and then the, tu the, uh, the turbocharger push the air directly in the intake manifold. The reason for declutching the supercharger at higher revs is that it would otherwise be drawing nearly 50 brake horsepower at 7000 RPM. The end result is 505 brake horsepower or a ridiculous specific output of 235 brake horsepower per litre. As glamorous as a V8 or a V12? Maybe not, but this is a fascinating four cylinder. Now from petrol to potent liquids of another kind, Martini. The famous vermouth manufacturer was founded 160 years ago just up the road in Turin. But it was about 55 years ago when Count Rossi started putting the name on the side of cars, starting of course with Porsche. But over the years those famous stripes have been seen on all sorts of manufacturers' cars, everything from Lotus to Brabham to Williams to Ferrari in Formula One. And my favourite of course, the Dry Martini powerboat team. In the WRC we had Ford with its Focus which looked particularly cool. But there's one manufacturer that has given Martini racing more success than any other. In the Group A era of the late 80s and early 90s the Delta won six championships on the bounce. The fifth and sixth of those were celebrated with special edition road cars, the Martini 5 and the Martini 6. But that always seemed perhaps just a little bit wrong because there was another car that had also worn the Martini livery and it was also a Lancia and had also won a world championship, that 037. Surely there should be a Martini 7 as well. And now Camira is going to put that right, which seems like quite an honour for such a little manufacturer. This is the Martini 7. Its pure white paint and the relatively simple stripes somehow elongate the look of the car. There is a new splitter at the front, but even cooler is the ability to remove the bumper at the rear, like the rally cars. I love the lamp pods, obviously, but the white coated exhausts and blue interior are right up my aesthetic strasser too. Like the Evo 37, it is all built by Alessandro Bonetto to exacting standards. But the 7 is not just about the looks because it also has slightly different hardware in the shape of shorter gearing, which just so happens to have been fitted to another Martini liveried car. This turbofanned wonder is affectionately known as Penelope and it's Camira's development vehicle with the full 505 brake horsepower, that shorter gearing and a set of sticky Trofeo R tyres. And while Ferrari has Fiorano, Camira has Busco. It's a really tight, nasty little circuit there. It's going to have a boost. Perfect, really, for a rally car. And the difference with this car is that it's got the shorter gearing of the Martini 7 car, but also it has an extra stage map, which gives us the full 505 brake horsepower. This car, I mean, I've already compared it to a Ferrari F40 in a way. But it's like an F40 plus. I'm not going to let it be said that this is not a car that keeps your hands very full. I love the way you 
just ride that wave of boost. This car does actually have traction control, which when I had it turned on, did an admirable job of keeping everything reined in surprisingly smoothly. In fact, you could feel an added level of refinement to the whole drivetrain, with the latest mapping and a different clutch. So you've got a rear view mirror in here as well, which is nice. It's actually a camera so you can see what's behind all. You can have it as a mirror, just so you can see that engine bay, which I like. It's such a sort of calm steering, such beautifully suspension. So it's absolutely frantic. Mad engine. To be honest, much as I love driving this on track because it is fun, it's as a road car where well, I think this really makes the most sense. I just love the way it rides those curves. Might be my favourite thing about this car actually. And it's why I think it makes such a cool, cool road car. It's a rally DNA in it, a rally setup. I had no idea what to expect before we came out to Italy. But what I found is something really rather wonderful. It's a car that challenges you every step of the way just as a road creation of a Group E car should in my mind. It feels a little like heresy to say this, but the original road-going Stradale homologation versions of Group B rally cars have always struck me as a little underwhelming. They look fantastic, and I love them for what they represent, but their detuned powertrains mean they can't really hold a candle to their wild competition counterparts in the driving stakes. It's a bit of an Instagram versus reality sort of situation. This Camira Evo 37, however, sets that right. This feels like a true road car reflection of a Group B rally car.